this on? Rats. Hello everyone, my name is Katie Carson. I am one of the soap makers here at Royalty Soaps. Welcome to my bathroom. I didn't plan out my intros and outros very well because I had a baby. So the week I'm supposed to film them, it's raining every single day. But if you're new around here, we like to keep it real here at Royalty Soaps. So welcome to the Royal Court. This is the first video of the May 2019 collection. And this month's theme is the secret garden. And we are starting it out with a bang with Monet's Lily Pond. This cold process soap is actually based on a glycerin soap that I made last year right here. If you would like to see that video, I will leave you guys a link in the upper right hand corner of the screen so you can see the original version. And without further ado, let's make some soap. We begin, of course, by pouring our lye water down our stick blender into our oil. The recipe I'm using today is down in the description box below. If you would like the oil blend pre-mixed for you and ready to go, you can get it at NurtureSoap.com. And now, using my stick blender, I am going to blend this up on high until just past emulsion. soap being blended till just past emulsion, maybe even to a very light trace. I'm gonna measure off some batter for what will look like the lily pad tendrils in the pond and also the swirl in the water. It's very rare that I get to make a soap that is almost all blue, so I'm really happy I get to do that today. So into this container, we are going to be putting some blue tide mica from Mad Micas. An absolutely stunning color. When mixed with TD, is the perfect Tiffany blue. And into the large container, we are also going to add some blue tide, but mixed with the blue tide, we have brilliant blue from Nurture Soap. So this is going to make it a slightly deeper toned blue, a little less aqua, and yeah, a little more primary colored. Just going to whip my spatula around real quick to get as much of that colorant off as possible. And then for the green, we are adding green vibrance from Nurture Soap into this small container for our drop swirl on top. So let's blend up these colors. I went ahead and added a little bit of titanium dioxide into this bucket just to lighten it up a little bit so that these two would be more contrasted with my in the pot swirl. The fragrance oil I am using today is watercress and aloe by Nature's Garden, which is what I felt would be the perfect thing for a Monet lily pond. It's supposed to smell like water. I wanted it to kind of have a plant smell, like a reed maybe smell to it. It totally does. So really, really perfect for this application. Application. I'm gonna begin by stir. No, I'm not. Never mind. It rises. <laughs> So into this base blue, I am going to pour this accent blue and it's gonna be real swirly. We want it to look like water. This is not one of those times I'm going for super, super defined colors. One of the very precious few times I may add. Normally I'm all about that color staying separate, but this is just supposed to look, again, kind of like water. Maybe with the light hitting it in different places and whatever. Right. So let's go ahead and pour this into the mold after this quick commercial break. So pouring out of one edge of the container, 
I'm gently just gonna drip this all around and you can see the marbled look of the soap in there. It still has a little bit of definition, but not a whole bunch. And I'm gonna pour the bulk majority in because I want that green to stay very, very close to the top of the soap. So I'm leaving about this much in the container. And then we're gonna drip drop this green, not too high, once again, because I want it to stay pretty close to the top of the soap. And we're gonna go all around. We're not just gonna go up and down. That's what I'm doing right now, but we'll go side to side and sort of zigzag it all around the soap. Just make it look very random, like reeds. I am going to leave this in the container so that I can drip it on the top a little bit later. So now, afterwards, I'll go ahead and add the rest of the blue. And again, just kind of dripping that on top. It's also not going to go very deep at all. Probably won't even make much of a difference. Going to scrapey, scrapey, my big containing. Gonna go ahead and pat this down on the top just to even it all out. It's still quite runny, so that's not a problem. And yeah, I'm gonna pull that green around a little bit. And remember, greens always look ugly <laughs> whenever you're making the soap but they turn very beautiful the next day. So now I'm gonna take some of that green and just throw it around a little bit. I'm trying not to make any like one big piece. It's supposed to look pretty thin, specifically with little drops on the top. Like you can see all these little tiny bits. I just think it ties in with the embeds well. I think the key to getting it to do that is not putting very much on the spatula. I also wanted the blues and greens and everything to swirl a little more because that reminds me of Monet's art style. He doesn't have like super sharp lines or anything. It's all very fluid looking, specifically his water pieces. Beautiful. So now that all of that is in, I'm going to take the Mad Micah's Fairy Duster in Sparkle Me Aqua, and I'm going to give it a very light spritzing for now. We're going to come in and spritz a little more later, but I just wanted to make sure that I started with a good base. I have gone without glitter for long enough. <laughs> okay, so I've put my divider that Kenny built me on the top of this mold. Now with Kenny's molds that he made me, I can flip it and I can get these dividers closer to the soap. But with these gray ones, all of the lines would just mash right into the bars and that wouldn't be ideal. So for the embeds, we have these little pink flowers and we also have these lily pads. All of them have been hand cut and have this really intricate little design around it to make it look even more like the real thing. So I'm gonna start by placing the lily pads on because I feel those are going to be the harder thing to get right. So I'll start with the hard one and <laughs> get easier as I go along. Now this original soap that I made, the one with melt and pour, I hand sculpted each one of the lily pads using sorcery soap dough. However, I was not going to have time because I am making bigger batches now than just, you know, like seven bars or whatever that was for fun and therefore had to use glycerin soap. So for the glycerin soap, we used this mold that Simeon found that was really, really handy from Amazon. And then we cut out, or I cut out at least for these, <laughs> each one of the lily pads and then made all those little scratchy marks because those really do just make it look a little bit more authentic. I'm really proud of B from Sorcery Soap Dough, by the way. She and Nurture just did a collaboration where you get all these awesome micas plus her Magic of Soap Dough ebook so you can make your own soap dough. It's a great way to try out lots of different colorants and also if cold process is something that's already familiar to you, a wonderful way to kind of enhance your soap designs, whether you do soaps with frosting or soaps without, or even if you wanted to try to, you know, make soap dough sculptures or something. I'm going to turn this to the side just to make sure I'm staying in the lines. <laughs> B has an awesome Facebook group that people go to and share all of the really just artistic soap craftsmanship that they do with her soap dough recipe. Highly recommend, especially for people too who are doing this kind of as a hobby and stuff because soap dough is really, really time consuming. B makes it look so easy, but it's another one of those specialized things sort of, just like soap piping is. I am digging the top of this. I'm so glad Simeon found this mold. Woo, 
Okay, that was time consuming. <laughs> but we're not done, we still have to put all the blooms on. And so, by movie magic, we will simply... They're all in! by magic. Oh, I dig it. It's so gorgeous. So I started putting some ocean breeze glitter on here, but I decided I don't like it. So now we're just spritzing the top gently <laughs> with the spritzer we used a little bit earlier. And it is making all the texture on both the flowers and the lily pads stand out. And instead we'll take a little bit of hollow glitter, put that on the bars instead, make them look a little watery little sparkly and we will spritz the top very liberally with rubbing alcohol we don't want that blue getting all ashy and gross and that's it we're done with Monet's lily pond excuse me I die this is so gorgeous again the lily pads though. And I can't wait to see what that green looks like tomorrow. So we are gonna let this sit for 18 to 24 hours and then we will come back and split the slab into loaves and cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break. Okay, y'all, y'all though, this soap is my favorite this month. I've got to stop saying like, this is my favorite scent. This is my favorite soap of all time because I say that about everything. But this one, this is my favorite for the month. I'm just going to line it up here with my multi-bar cutter. Looks good. Press down gently. Take one out of the middle. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Okay, I'm honestly kind of shocked that it looks so similar to my original illustration. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get that blue swirl to look kind of watercolored, but it worked out. Also, it kind of looks like there's blue lily pads in these two particular bars, and that's really weird. <laughs> But just like with the melt and pour soap, I really do think that the top is what makes this bar. That and the fragrance. The fragrance is amazing. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment down below. There's lots of different Instagrams for you to follow. One for royalty soaps and soapy stuff. One for my brother Kenny and all of his goodness. And one for my personal stuff, including baby pictures and all that kind of goodness. Be sure to join us on Saturday for another soap making video. And like I said in a few videos ago, we're going to be doing some extra fun stuff this month, including a making shampoo bars video. I can't wait to share that one with you. I also have a really fun announcement that my family and I are going to be participating in on the third week of May. I can't tell you what it is though, because my mom still hasn't told everyone. Y'all need to go over there and bug her about that. I'll leave her Instagram down below too. And without further ado, have an absolutely royal day. Do something that makes you happy, whether that is sitting down and bathing your baby for the second time, only the second time today, he got a bath. Or taking a bath yourself, because how long has it been since I washed my hair? Either way, do something that makes you happy, and we'll see you soon. So until next time, bye for now. I only have two hands. One is holding a baby, one's holding the camera, so be prepared for an awkward whoosh angle. Yeah, push. <laughs>